Welcome back to Good Morning, Lalan. I am so incredibly honored to be having a conversation about spirituality. Like, where did we come from? Where is, what is thinking? All these things, all these great questions that I know I had my entire life. And Peter Canova is in the house, who is a masterful author, has done incredible research from everything from Edgar Cayce to, you know, just the lineage of how we came here as spirits into the human realm and take us through this. How are you? I'm great. Nice to be here. So nice to have you here. Thank We're you. thrilled to have you for Steve Allen here, uh, PR Amazing. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about your journey and tell us a little bit about your books. Well, um, ironically enough, I'm a real estate developer, which you might not equate with what we're talking about today. But back in ancient days, meaning when I was in my 20s, uh, I had a series of very vivid spiritual experiences, psychic experiences, learning that I was a very accurate medical intuitive and uh, displayed a lot of phenomena like remote viewing and psychometry, being able to touch something and know a lot of things about a person. And this kind of startled me because I really had no antecedents in my life to expect this. So I proceeded to start doing a lot of research. I started reading ancient spiritual texts and quantum physics mm -hmm. to get both a scientific side and a spiritual <clears throat> side to explain some of the phenomena that I was experiencing. And that sort of led me to want to write books, sort of getting that experience out there for other people. Peter, I'd really like to go back, though, to the moment when you recognized you had these abilities. You're in real estate, you're a professional, you're selling luxury properties, and you become some sort of medical intuitive. I mean, this is one extreme to another. What was that like? Who, what was this diagnosis, this person? How did this make you feel? It, it, it put me off balance for a while because at one point I went way too far overboard on the psychic and, and spiritual side, and I had to really work at uh, rebalancing myself. But um, rather than stay in a place where I was doing individual readings for people and all these other psychic experiences, I got to the point where I asked myself, okay, well, that's fine, but where do you go from here? There's got to be more to it than that. And at that point, I decided that, you know, with all the research and experience that I had, I really wanted to get that out to other people so that they could understand more about the process that I went through, which is the same process that everybody potentially can go through. And um, rather than do self-help books, which a lot of people are doing and probably better than I could do, I decided to do it through novels and get that message out through characters who would embody these different experiences. And what is that message? Well, you know, I think as products of a Judeo-Christian background, we were brought up with a fundamental guilt in our lives. Mm -hmm. And that was that an image of being created like little wind-up dolls in this earthly insane asylum by an external <laughs> God. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we screwed up and we're forever trying to get back into his good graces. And the ancient texts, the original Christianity and the very source of mystic Judaism, if you cut out all the corporate stuff that happened mm -hmm. later on, tells us a very different story. And that story is that we are not separate from God, that we are actually part of God's essence and self. In fact, if you view God as the light, we are the lenses through which God or higher consciousness, whatever makes you feel comfortable if you don't like the word God, but that this higher consciousness projects itself into other forms of experience, right. including the psychic and material world. Yeah. So basically, we're the fingers of God touching the face of this world, and our purpose is to right. spiritualize the material and bring the experience of the material back to spirit. So take us through the actual kind of story of how we came into the humanly realm from this perspective. Well, it, it's, kind of, it's kind of interesting because what you learn is that the fundamental reality is a unity. It's, 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 it's one all-encompassing unity. And that unity is conscious. It is, but it's static. It's inert. It doesn't really act. And in order to experience, you, you have to act. There has to be motion. There has to be a dynamic. So this one unity divided itself into two opposing polarities, which they've called yin and yang or, or, or male and female. Mm -hmm. And the male side is it... it uh, it's logical, it orders, and it's plan. it plans. The female side is intuitive, and it creates, and it acts. And it's the interplay of energies 
between like the polarity of a battery, for instance. It's the interplay of those energies that creates the motion, the friction, and the heat that produces experience, that produces the experiential world. Mm -hmm. And the interesting part about it was it was really the female side that in, in, in almost all these texts from Hinduism to early Christianity, they recognized that it was the female side that really gave birth to this world. Because being creative and being intuitive, that female side seeks experience. And the only way you develop wisdom is through experience. So there was a fall of consciousness from this female side that ultimately led to the creation of the material world. And mm -hmm. I really believe that it's that same intuitive feminine nature that leads us back to where we came from. Because you don't really plan to have an experience mm -hmm. with God. You know right? what I mean? But you, knowing, you but knowing that back to it. spiritually there's no such thing as time or space, right? So it's happening now, right? I mean, all this, you can go like, this is history of it, but there's no such thing as history from the spiritual realm. Yeah, it, it, even quantum physics understands that at a deeper, more fun fundamental level of reality, beyond time and space, mm -hmm. there is no time and, and space in a way because everything is all one thing happening simultaneously. Mm -hmm. it, it, in the perceptual world that we have, we perceive time in order that we can reflect and learn from our experience over here at a higher level that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love the books, of course. Um, and um, I, I want to get to the books um, specifically. But first, I want to ask a question for maybe viewers who want to have um, a sort of God experience or they want to make real changes in their lives. You know, what would you share with them? How can they spiritualize this material existence in a way that benefits them, whether it's psychologically, emotionally, or spiritually? Because um, I think people struggle with that. There's so many options out in the world. What have you learned about spiritualizing the material? Well, I think the very first thing is you have to have a desire. Because without desire uh, and feeling, uh, you won't go anywhere. Uh, I kind of liken it to a rocket. A rocket has two parts to it. It has um, the fuel and the, and the guidance system. The male or the logical side is the guidance system that can say, it can conceptualize and it can understand ideas, but it's the feeling, intuitive feminine side that's the fuel that mm -hmm. propels us somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say that um, people should really sort of understand and try and work with that feeling, intuitive part of themselves, whether it's through meditation, uh, you can study about it, but that's the logical side. Eventually that study has to turn into a, uh, an actual experience or action of what you're doing. There's a lot of different paths that you can get to, but in general, I think that's uh, the beginning on the road to a spiritual journey. Totally agree. So I'd love for you to talk to us about the books and the way that books are developed. You've won mm -hmm. 10 awards, you won in like 18 months, right? Including Reader's Digest. So can you walk us through the trilogy that you have here and sort of what each book um, sort of captures for readers? Yeah, well, the trilogy is called the First Souls Trilogy. And the reason for that is it's about the first, um, spirit consciousness to incarnate in the material world. And it's written in reverse order. And it's kind of interesting because uh, it encompasses three different genres. The first book is called Pope Annalisa, about an African nun that becomes the first female pope. And it's set against an impending nuclear war between America and Iran. Uh, and everybody's out to get her and everybody's out to trying to figure out what she's about. Is she kind of the, the person who's going to sort of save the world or is she the one who's going to lead the world order to ruin? Um, and a little bit of a spoiler here, we find out in the second book that she's a reincarnation of the shadowy figure of Mary Magdalene from the Bible who comes to complete in the modern age what Mary couldn't do back in the patriarchal age mm -hmm. of you know the Greco-Roman culture that wouldn't pay any attention yes, to women. Yes, yes. So, so she, she sort of like, at the, the Pope <laughs> in the first book is the triumphant Mary Magdalene of the second book. The third and final book, which just came out, which is called The Light of Distant Suns, is the is the or book of origins. It's sort of the source world from where we came. It, it, it chronicles the transition from the spiritual realm into the earthly plane in an Atlantis-like civilization. And this is where the Edgar Cayce mm -hmm. part comes in because much of it is based on uh, Cayce's readings. Um, and this earthly civilization is kind of an Atlantis-like civilization that becomes polarized because some of them fall really under the spell of materiality and begin to lose their spiritual vision. The others who retain their spiritual vision are pitted against them and they literally destroy this magnificent prehistoric advanced civilization mm -hmm. with these different wars of dominion right. you know, that they have. So I have a question. Do you think that this will ever end because this is happening now, right? These same stories play out over and over again, even in today's world. 
Do you the, think we'll these ever... are our typical stories. Yeah, I mean, are we ever going to move yeah, past yeah. this? Yeah. Um, well, I, I, you know, I do believe eventually. Don't ask me for a date. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, you know, I, 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 I do believe that there is a rising consciousness in the world. I'm sure you've all seen it. Um, but the polarity seems stronger than, than ever. I'm not so sure about that. Um, I, I, I think that um, the funny thing about polarities is that they don't always stay here and they don't always stay there. They kind of go like this mm. a lot. And mm -hmm. I, I think we're seeing a lot of interplay. And I think sometimes when we see the friction between those polarities and we say, wow, that's bad, that could be a good thing because that could be the dyna dynamic moving towards the center. Yeah. Of course, yeah. What do you feel about some of the non-duality teachings like Ramana Maharshi or Eckhart Tolle, um, you know, about the folks that sort of talk about the ways in which you know, we live in this world of duality and yeah. polarization and um, that a large, to a large extent, that's all mind-made stuff and that mm -hmm. ultimately, like you said, the reality is just unity, the, the reality is just oneness. You know, what's your experience and pers perspective on those teachings and have you found them helpful? And you know. I, I, you know, I do think they're helpful. I think that anything that tells people that, look, we perceive duality, but we're actually a unity yeah, um, sure. is a piece of knowledge that all of us could dwell on and think about and maybe, you know, lead to a little further research and study. And like I say, you know, um, everything is a personal journey. But if you if you really feel strongly enough to delve into these matters, um, you will come out a different person. You will learn things. Mm -hmm. But sometimes teachings like that, you know, are, are, are the door opener for some people. So, Peter, how are you a different person now than you were when you discovered these psychic abilities? Decades ago. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a very different person in the way that, um, you know, that, that I uh, approach life. I think, um, for one thing, I tend to dwell in results rather than in the events that lead up to results. And by that, I mean, mm -hmm. well, for instance, even when you're brought up Catholic, your idea of praying is you get down on your knees and you say, oh, please give me this and please give me that. Okay that rarely gets answered because that's not the way the world works. Mm -hmm. The way the world works is that everything that we've known and everything that we want to achieve has already been done. It's not so much a matter of learning but a matter of remembrance mm -hmm. because in a higher state we've achieved and done everything that we could possibly do and it's a matter of us remembering. So now if I pray in effect, I think of, I see the end result as if it's an accomplished fact and I try and generate the, my feeling and my actions around the circumstances of that accomplished mm -hmm. fact. And, you know, more often than not, that's where you really get right. your answers from. And, and that's yeah. what I, I really do admire about you, that you are a real estate developer. You're not this person that was like, you know, I just have to do this spiritual stuff. It was something that the world needs to see that, in my opinion. They need to realize that it it's not, you know, it's all spirit. It doesn't matter where you are, what that is, it's all here. and and. It doesn't matter if people believe in it or not. It's like gravity. You can believe in it or not. It's still the reality. So for me, I'm just so, I'm so excited to dive into these books and just hear the story of us. It's really the story of us. So thank you so much for all of your research, all your profound gifts and bringing it to light and something that I, I hope to see it on all the screens, on all the TV, everything. People need to hear these stories in a new light of what it means to be spiritual and what it means, what God means. Well, thank you very much. And let me tell you all out there that if a real estate developer can get saved, <laughs> <that's> so, <laughs> so rad. Awesome. Tell people where they can find you and find your books. Yeah, um, if uh, you're curious to learn more about the work, you can go to popeanalisa.com. That's a double n a l i s a popeanalisa one word dot com or the thirteenth disciple dot com. There's a lot of information and TV interviews and things like that that are pretty educational. So cool. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Stay you tuned. Very much. We'll be right back.